A very warm good morning to all my dear students of Sri Gokulam Public School. This is Nidha Ma'am with you and we are moving into an English online class. In today's class, we will be discussing about a poem from your Hornbill textbook. The name of the poem is Childhood. It is written by a poet, Marcus Natan. The details of this poet are not very known to the readers. Only that he had written this poem at the age of 12 and it is translated to English. So let us quickly get into the poem. The poem Childhood, just as the title suggests, is a situation where the poet is pondering on or he is thinking about his childhood. Childhood has been for centuries considered by poets as a blissful period in one's life. And definitely it is the most important stage of growth and development because it is filled with innocence and we learn a lot of things in our childhood. These experiences shape a person who they turn out to be in the adult. So again, here in this poem, the poet is exhibiting a curiosity to know when does a individual stop being a child exactly he wants to know that line of demarcation or the point when the child stops being a child and grows up to become an adult of course scientifically speaking we can divide this period as from the age of 12 onwards we say it is teenage which is a transition period and then from 18 to 19 years we are moving into adulthood. Even though these kinds of scientific explanations are there, exactly at what point does a child cease to become a child? That learning or that understanding, when does it happen? We know that in every individual's life, it is not exactly happening to the scientific terms and conditions. There are children who suffer a lot in their childhood, especially the three children, uh, that they lose their innocence at the very young age. That analyzing is done by the poet over here. Okay, the poet begins the poem by putting forth a question to himself. That is, when does one lose his childhood? Is it the day when he was 11? Or is it the time when he realized that heaven and hell could not be located on the maps? Now, what does this mean by heaven and hell could not be located on the map? It simply means that the child realizes fantasy from reality. So when does that reality dawn upon him? This heaven and hell, these are all imaginary places and, you know, they cannot be located on the map. When does the child realize that? Definitely, through experiences, it is at different points of time. Now, because of this um, overuse of technology and science and all, I don't feel that, you know, children have the room or the space to fantasize. Not like the olden years or the older generations where children could just blissfully live by thinking that the moon was a real thing and, you know, birds could talk, squirrels could understand your language. These kinds of fantasies, even to the extent that, you know, there are ghosts and all those kinds of things. Those fantasies are moving away from the child's life now. So when does that children realize that? or matures enough to realize that these heaven and hell are just imaginary places and could not be found in the maps. Now in the second stanza, again he puts forth this question, when did my childhood go? And now he has got another set of questions also to ask. Now this is actually, you know, pulling out the reality of adults. The adults are not how they appear to be. So we know that in, in our childhood, when we were really very small, we believed everything what the elders told us. We told we were we thought that, you know, they just spoke all truth 
and sincere things but as we grow up we understand that adults can be really very fake and pretentious they can just pretend a lot of things their faces can be masked with a lot of different kind of emotions emotions can be hidden inside we are all now as we are growing up we are learning all these kinds of acts and pretensions and being false selves you know we might not like a person but we are able to look into that person's face and smile and say oh wow you are so wonderful we might have so much anger towards a person and still be able to talk politely to them and you know we might feel like doing different behaving rude to a person yet we be- behave in a very humble kind of manner so all these kinds of things adults are not what they seem to be they may talk of love and preach of love but they can also be very cruel the opposite side is also there you might hear a person speak so much of about honesty and truthfulness and sincere and that person could be a thief or a cheater in real life that person could be really cheating you and then speaking lot of lovely things about you so those kinds of pretentious acts also adults are doing when we realize all these things definitely our innocence also goes away so that is what the poet is again speaking about they are doubled faced in reality was that realization that changed the child in him and then another set of questions when his childhood had gone was when i realized that my mind was really mine now again as children we tend to follow what the elders our teachers our parents our elders tell us but at certain point especially when we are reaching our teenager uh, we realize that you know we have got our own identity our own thoughts and emotions that our mind is in our control i choose to be the master of my mind okay and it is not necessary that i have to always imitate and produce the same thoughts as others i can be unique and different from others was that realization that maturity that changed the child in him so that is what he is asking again that he is able to produce his own thoughts we are able to even debate on certain common things we can are able to say that no i did not like it because of so and so so reason you are able to say that that individuality sensing of individuality that separate personality that realization did that change the child in him and then finally the poet is coming up with his own answer to satisfy the questions to the questions that are coming out from his mind he has got he is trying to find a solution for that he says that where did my childhood go and then he says perhaps it has gone to some forgotten place In, into an infant's smile infant means baby okay so the poet is trying to justify or find a solution for his uh, questions by saying that probably the childhood is a place where you can always find on a baby's face okay the baby's face where the baby is completely oblivion what do you mean by oblivion he does not know completely unaware of all the pretenses the 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 different kind of emotions the child is unaware the baby is unaware of all these kinds of things the baby just knows to stay happy to cry when it is hungry and then just sleep and enjoy life he is not aware of any responsibilities about duties emotions that this the tug of war of life he is not aware of it so he feels that childhood is always found on a baby's face and you know as as long as you remain as a baby you are in a very blissful and happy place and then your experiences change you they shape you to who you are now it's a very simple simple kind of a poem uh, the rhyme scheme which is used over here is a b b c c d is the rhyme scheme 
and of course there is a refrain which means repetition of lines which is where did my childhood go and was that the day so that is the refrain which is used over here so th these are some of the important poetic devices used in this lesson it's a very simple kind of a poem like i said and very easy to understand also so with this we will conclude today's class just go through the poem again read it and understand it so that's all thank you we will meet again in the next class